once again the Triple Sevens Horror Review, where I review a horror movie that you may or may not have seen. Um, before I get into the movie, I'm just going to let you know how I end up picking these movies. Every Sunday, me and my cousin, um, we usually get together and watch two horror movies. Um, if a horror movie is really, really good, then we can just watch whatever after. Um, but if it's really, really bad, then we'll have to wait to find another good um, scary movie. If both are bad, then we'll find a whole bunch of horror shorts on YouTube. Um, there are a lot of good horror shorts on YouTube. Uh, you can look at Pony Smasher. That Some of their stuff is amazing. So I check it out, or I would recommend for you to check it out. It's about two to five minutes. Um, it's well worth the watch. Um, so, anyway, this week, and that wasn't even a, no, I guess that was a plug. So, you're welcome. If you get that one extra view, you're welcome. Um, so, this week, I'm going to be doing Children of the Corn 5, Fields of Terror. Um, in this case, because I've seen this movie recently, um, I have more of a vivid memory of what happened versus X to Hell. So, I'm just going to go ahead and try to go off memory and... Yeah. So anyway, your movie starts off with a kid and the kid's walking around a cornfield in the middle of the night um, and sees a fire and investigates the fire and becomes possessed. So doesn't explain anything, but that's what happens. So this kid, a year later, kills two adults who is living on that cornfield and takes over their home. Because I guess he needs, a, probably need that cornfield. So that's why he killed him. Now, my thing is, in all children of the corn movies, and this is no exception, if the kids are there and all the adults are bad, you know, why aren't they killing every single adult that's seen? These two adults were pretty old, so why did they survive? So this question is for anyone who's actually going to research it or if you have an answer let me know please moving on um so you have your two main characters assuming they're your main characters it's a team that has a blow-up dial and uses this blow-up dial for landmarks for the other four passengers for his friends and it's his girlfriend so the two teens while tying up blow-up dials for landmarks discover a cornfield because cornfields all around and the teen's girlfriend goes in the middle of the cornfield to steal some corn. Why are you stealing corn in the middle of a cornfield? I mean, she went in deep, too. Like, really, really, really deep. Why? You know, if you want to steal corn, just as soon as you look out, grab a ear, go back in the car. Well, anyway, so a group of kids, of course, kills her because she's stealing corn. Now... The boyfriend is looking for the girlfriend and actually sees her get killed. And then he runs frantically screaming. And then, of course, he gets killed. Oh, well. So, cuts to the four teens in the movie. Now, this Eva Mendez is one of the teens. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. They have Eva Mendez in this movie. Um, this is her earlier days, of course. But it's her... Um, I think her character's name was Kier on this movie. Um, another female named Allison and two throwaway teens. The throwaway teens are the guys in the movie because they had no type of character development at all. Um, Kier, she, the trip is pretty much so she can bury her boyfriend's ashes. So that was the whole purpose of the trip. If I'm wrong about that, someone correct me about that too. So, they take a road trip, and, of course, car breaks down. Of course it does. And the, well, not in the middle of the cornfield, but on the side of the cornfield. But they run into the kids. Now, the kids warn them. The kids are like, hey, this is our cornfield. Stay out of it, you know, and go into town if you need help. So, the teens go into town. And so, in town, they went to a bar. And guess who was in the bar? Kane Hodder. So excited. So, and the whole Kane Hodder thing is from episode one, X to Hill, Kane Hodder was actually the star of that movie. And I went over the whole Jason thing. Uh, watch episode one. 
or listen to episode one if you hadn't done so. Um, but anyway, so Kane Hodder is there, and there are a lot of adults in this bar. There are a lot. And I'm thinking to myself, how are there a lot of adults? Because the kids kill the adults because the adults are unpure and you know they go against the he who walks behind the rose you know but moving on because movie so allison happens to overhear or she talks to one of the patrons and he happens to tell her like hey you know this place has a lot of kids but they believe in this guy called he who walks behind the rose so which triggers allison to kind of panic because of the fact that her brother was like, hey, I want to go ahead and find he who walks behind the rose. So it's a religious cult that I guess is only in Nebraska. I'm hoping it's only in Nebraska because if they both were in San Diego and then moving on, I'm not even going to. So she sets out to find him. That's that's her thing now. Um trying to think what else so after she found out about her brother da, 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 da. sorry so anyway so she tells um the group like hey my brother is here i need to go find them you know are you in or are you are are you out so the group reluctantly helps her and they run into the kids again because for whatever reason that they can find these kids so easily in the corner field. anyway so the kids say, hey, the leader of the group of kids is named Ezekiel. And Ezekiel is like, hey, okay, I'll take you to your brother. So Ezekiel, before taking her to her brother, they met the, I guess, supposed leader of the cult, the vessel for he who walks behind the rose, which, no shit, it's Bill from Kill Bill, David Carradine. Uh, so I was excited to see him too. Um, but he explains what his purpose is, which is pretty much to mentor the kids, to guide them in the right path, uh, and to follow the he who walks behind the rose. That's it. And that's where Jacob, Allison's brother, <clears throat> excuse me, is following. So Allison ends up talking to Jacob, and Jacob is like, no, I don't want to go. I'm about to have a kid. I got a wife. And she's like, dude, you're 17. How do you have this? Um... And then Jacob tells her, like, well, you know, hey, on my 18th birthday, I got to commit suicide. I got to sacrifice myself for he who walks behind the rose. So my thing is, right, and I have a lot of these questions that I ask during these movies. And horror movies aren't supposed to make sense because you just kind of sit back, enjoy the ride. But come on, man. So if the corn is raising you, right? And the corn is raising you to be pure because it's raising you as a child. Why is it trying to kill you as an adult? Why does it want to, like, why do they want you to sacrifice yourself? You know? So the reason why they want them to sacrifice themselves is because that's the age of sin. 18 years old is the age of sin. But the corn is raising you. And then you left a whole bunch of adults alive at that bar. So, obviously, some people have been slipping. <sighs> anyway, so, Jacob decides, um, you know, he tells his sister to leave, and Allison goes back to the little cottage that they had, um, and within this cottage, she reads the book of He Who Walks Beyond the Rose. Kira also reads this book of He Who Walks Beyond the Rose, and... Allison finds a secret message saying, save me or help me. And cut back to Jacob. And Jacob is like, hey, you know, this is my time to commit suicide. And Ezekiel's like, yes, you must fall into the pit. So it's a fiery pit that's on top of a um, silo. And inside that pit is supposedly where he who walks behind the road stay. And Jacob pretty much has to throw himself in that pit because now he's 18 next day. So Jacob refuses and takes off. Ezekiel sends kids after him. But now here's Kier. And Kier's like, hey, I lost a boyfriend. I'll commit suicide. I read the book from front to back. So I know your ways. I know your religion. I know how this works. So my thing about that. 
if you look at the book, the book was like the size of War and Peace. Granted, a lot of people is not going to know what War and Peace is. It's a really, really thick book. Um, and you are not reading that in two hours. You are not at all. But, progressing the movie. So, anyway, Kira kills herself. But, and the half up thing about that is when she killed herself, no one even cared. No one was looking. So, as far as the kids. So, she could have kind of faked her death. Anyway, anyway. So, meanwhile, Allison is set to save Jacob, but she gets the cops involved. Um, and the cops come in and try to arrest Bill. His name was Luke, but Bill. And during their altercations, the cops die. Um, anyone who tries to help, like firefighters, etc., they die. And Allison and the two throwaway teens, they go into a bar. Now, inside this bar, they find Jacob's dying body. Or, it's not dying body, but Jacob is over there dying. And, of course, because reasons, Jacob still has enough to say to Allison before he dies. Well, after their speech, the kids break into the barn and kill throwaway teens one and two because they were throwaway teens. They should have died earlier. And Allison decides that the only way that she can stop them is by fighting fire with fire. So she, in order to fight fire with fire, she came up with this idea to throw something flammable, gas cans, inside the silo where he who walks behind the rose resides. So uh, she goes up there with the gas cans. Ezekiel comes up there. And Ezekiel's like, hey, you know. Well, they get into it, and then she throws Ezekiel in, and the kids are watching below because Ezekiel wanted the kids to sacrifice themselves for he who walks behind the rose, and Allison kills him. Allison blows up the little silo, and then her and her kids walk off in the sunset. Well, actually, it's in the middle of the night, but she gave them the talk like, hey, you know, it's not your time to die yet, so let's go, and the kids just followed her because years and years and years of being preached and just going through religion you know some outsider is just going to tell you one thing and you're going to listen <sighs> anyway so fast forward so jacob had a baby um jacob's dead so allison is going to watch the baby because the mother is way too young so yeah, Allison is going to raise the baby, and then the baby is supposedly possessed. That is your movie. That is Children of Corn 5. You can watch it. Um, hopefully, if you listen to this whole review, I talked you into not watching it. If you're going to watch a Children of Corn movie, I would recommend for you to watch Children of Corn 1. And possibly 2. Um, Children of Corn 3 actually holds a soft spot to me. Because that was the first Children of Corn movie that I've seen. Um, and I like that movie, but it's a bad movie. You know how you have your horror movies where you like them, but they're bad? That's that's my take on that. Um, that's it. That's all I have. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, complaints, suggestions, any type of feedback, feel free to leave it on my Facebook page. Um, you can just go to facebook.com slash horror review. So that's going to be H-O-R-R-E-V-I-E-W. Um, leave a comment. Again, suggestions, questions, anything you want me to read on here, I'm all for it. You can catch me at SoundCloud. Same thing under horror review. Um, and I want to thank you all for listening. And honestly, if it's only two people that listen... You know to this whole little thing that i'm doing you know i really want to thank you thank you for listening to me you know rant about horror movies because i do this so often that i feel like you know y'all should pretty much hear it um the whole purpose of this is pretty much for my friends just to kind of like laugh at so it's something that we can talk about but it is something that i really don't mind and i enjoy sharing with you all so i want to thank you for listening um I had something else to say. I should probably write stuff down so I have stuff to instead of just kind of like going with it. 
But anyway, thanks for listening. Um, and I will see you next week. If y'all have movie suggestions as well, I will be more than happy to take those. So up until then, this is Triple Seven signing off. actually stayed here um thank you that means that you're incredibly devoted or incredibly bored um but yeah i forgot to actually rate this movie so i will go ahead and give this two ears of corn out of five so if you want to go see it based off of what you just heard hey more power to you um i would recommend just watching part one or again watching village of the damn